Hey guys, Doug B here, your axe wielding hack. Hey, I am still looking through the list of suggestions for videos. And here's another good one from Brock Pate. Hey Doug, thanks so much for all your help with the Axe FX3. I love seeing your tutorials. The axe is a beast and not everything is easy to figure out. I was wondering if you could potentially do a video on the Spitif digital out on the axe. In my home studio, I'm working with limited inputs and running Spitif to optical in into my interface would certainly be a lifesaver. Have you set your axe up this way? Any tips for configuring everything? Thanks again. Well, thank you for the suggestion, Brock. Much appreciated. Yeah, you know, I had been using Spitif with my home studio. Then I switched to USB, but now I am back to Spitif. Let's check out why I switched back and how you can use Spitif with your Axe FX3, FM9, FM3, and your home studio. First off, what exactly is Spitif anyway? Well, according to Wikipedia, Spitif is an acronym that stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface. Spitif is a type of digital audio interface used in consumer audio equipment to output audio over relatively short distances. The signal is transmitted over either a coax cable with RCA connectors or a fiber optic cable with Toslink connectors. Spitif interconnects components in home theaters and other digital high fidelity systems. Spitif is based on the AES-3 interconnect standard. Spitif can carry two channels of uncompressed PCM audio or compressed 5.1 surround sound. It cannot support lossless surround formats that require greater bandwidth. Spitif is a data link layer protocol as well as a set of physical layer specifications for carrying digital audio signals over either optical or electrical cable. Sony and Philips were the primary designers of Spitif. Okay, now that we have the technical jargon out of the way, let's just say that Spitif allows you to keep your signal in the digital format all the way to your recording software. It doesn't get converted to analog and then converted back to digital. There's less chance of any signal degradation. But why not just use USB? It's basically the same principle in that the data from the modeler stays in the digital format all the way to your recording software. And honestly, I could not hear any difference in signal quality. But the issue I had was when AxeEdit was running at the same time. AxeEdit communicates with the Axe FX3 via USB, so trying to use USB for both AxeEdit and recording at the same time can have some unpredictable results. Sometimes it would work okay, other times the guitar audio from Logic Pro, which is my DAW, would get delayed by a good half second or so. And then there were the times that Logic Pro simply stopped working. So I had to stop using USB when I was recording. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I had been using Spitif, but switched to USB. Why? Well, my old interface, a UAD Apollo, would interface with Spitif easily. It would even convert from 48 to 44.1 on the fly. That was nice. But after seven years, my Apollo started failing on me and it was time for a new interface. When I looked at the new Apollo interfaces, my wallet seriously started having spasms. And when I thought about it, I was rarely, if ever, using the UAD plugins. So there was no real reason to stay within the UAD ecosphere. I tried a couple different interfaces before finally purchasing the PreSonus 1810C. It's a very solid interface, sounds great, and I've had no software or driver issues with it. But when I tried using Spitif, I was getting the occasional garble. So rather than research the issue, I got lazy and just switched to USB. <laughs> I mean, it was already connected, right? Then I found the issue when trying to record with it and using AxeEdit at the same time. Right around that time, I got the request from Brock. So I decided to do some research. Literally five minutes later, I had it up and running with no problems. So what was causing the garble? Well, I had to tell the PreSonus that it was going to be clocked from the spit of signal coming from the Axe FX3. That's all it took. So now I record using Spitif and I can have Axe Edit running with no problems at all. Thanks again, Brock. But why not just use the analog outs on the modeler? Well, you can if you prefer. You probably won't notice any difference in sound quality. But when you use Spitif, your left and right signals are always matched in volume and you won't be clipping the input. Also, you won't be taking up two of the precious inputs on your interface. So let's look at the Spitif ports on the latest Fractal modelers. All three models offer Spitif out, but only the Axe FX3 and the FM9 have Spitif in. Yeah, but why would you want to have Spitif in port on your modeler anyway? Well, the most common reason would be for reamping. 
But that's another topic that can be covered in a separate video, so we will save that for another day. So what do you need to use Spinif? Well, first off, your interface has to have at least a Spinif import. I don't know of any Macs or PCs that have a Spinif port, so that's why you'd need to use an interface. Then you'd need the correct cable for your situation. My cable uses digital audio coax RCA connectors on both ends. Your interface might have a Toslink connector or an optical connector. In that case, you'd have to either find a cable that has RCA coax on one end and either a Toslink or optical connector on the other end. Now, if you can't find a cable like that, you can buy a $15 converter box that will do the conversion, and yeah, you know where you can find it. Now you can connect your modeler to your interface. You also need to tell your interface to use 48 kilohertz instead of the standard 44.1. If you forget this step, you'll remember as soon as you try playing your guitar and hear a garbled mess. The fractal modelers are all locked to 48 kilohertz, so you either have to use 48 kilohertz when recording or have an interface that converts on the fly, like the Apollo interfaces. You also need to tell your interface that the Axe FX3 will be doing the clocking. Your interface should come with software that allows you to change various settings. My PreSonus has an app called Universal Control, and it has a menu for choosing the clock source. You would switch this to Spitif. I can give general instructions on how to use Spitif input with your recording software, or DAW. The bottom line is that you have to find out what channels your interface will use to transmit the Spitif signal to your DAW. For example, my PreSonus 1810C uses channels 9 and 10 for Spitif. Channels 1 through 4 are for the mic inputs, and channels 5 through 8 are for the line inputs. Now, as mentioned earlier, I use Logic Pro as my DAW. When recording from my fractal modelers, I use a stereo track for the input. If I'm recording from the Axe FX3, I tell Logic Pro to use inputs 9 and 10, the SPDIF channels. Since the Axe FX3 is using SPDIF, I have my FM3 connected via USB. If I'm recording from the FM3, I tell Logic Pro to use inputs 1 and 2, the default USB channels. Using SPDIF is very easy, and if your interface comes with a console app, you can also use SPDIF to play through your monitors without having to use your DAW. The PreSonus Universal Control app also allows you to access the inputs and their levels independent of your DAW. My Apollo also had a console app that allows you to do the very same thing. These console apps are basically mixers built into your interface so you can jam away to your heart's content without having to press that dreaded record button until you're ready. So there you have it, guys, my take on using Spitif in your home studio. It's really pretty easy to set up once you take stock of your interface and the cables and everything that you need. And it sounds fantastic. Give it a try. Let me know how it works for you. And if you have any problems, I'll see if I can help you out. Now, next Wednesday, we will be back at the factory, digging through those factory presets and letting the random number generator pick out another preset for us. Now, you don't want to miss that, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, we will see you then.